how to make chicken breast three different ways. The first way is going to be on the skillet. The second way is going to be baked in the oven and the third is going to be on the grill. I have definitely learned from trial and error because Chad can attest that I was a horrible cook when I first got married. So a lot of this is just because I've learned from my mistakes. And I wish I could have learned this before I got married because I feel like once you learn how to cook different kinds of meats, it gives you confidence. And chicken breasts especially are hard to keep tender and moist, but I feel like these ways are always foolproof and they work for me. And I hope they work for you. So the first step is prepping your chicken. No matter what you do, you have to prep your chicken. Um, for me, this is pretty easy. I flip my chicken over and you'll see this part right here is kind of fatty. This is your chicken tender. I just take my scissors and I'm gonna cut my chicken tender off right here. And you see, you got a nice little tender. I'm just gonna clean off like if it has anything that looks suspicious like blood or something I don't necessarily want to eat. I'll trim that just a little bit. And my kitty loves me for this. So I'll flip them all over, do the exact same thing. I cut my tender off. Because the key to making really good chicken is you want them all to be the same thickness, the same size, so you can cook them at an accurate temperature here. The next thing I do in my prep is I get a Ziploc bag. You can easily use saran wrap or something to cover it. I'm gonna put them in a bag. And the goal is to make them the same thickness. So whether you use, um, you can use a dough roller, you can use um, what I'm gonna use. This is very easy and simple. Um, and then I'm gonna save my tenders for the next recipe, okay? I have my breasts here, and I just want them about half an inch to maybe three fourths inch thick. I just want them, you see how the end gets thinner here? I just want to make them more even. So I just kind of pound on them here. Okay, the next step, I'm just going to lay out a paper towel because when I cook them on the cast iron, I want them to have that little outer crust on the edge. And the way to do that is you want to make sure your chicken is dry. I'm just going to lay it out here. I'm gonna pat it dry. Excuse my little children playing in the living room. And now I'm going to season them. Now it is very important that they're room temperature and these are, they've been sitting out. So when they're room temperature, it's so much easier to cook because they're all the same temperature. Okay, the next step, I'm just gonna mix some basic spices together because you can really make this to however you like it, whether you're making something that's Mexican, Italian, and kind of cater around that. But I'm just gonna add some salt and some pepper. I'm gonna add some onion powder. Some garlic powder. And just a little bit of parsley. And I'll mix this together. And I'm just gonna kind of rub it on my chicken breast. Now let's try. And I'll do this to both sides. Okay, now I have my chicken breast prepped and ready to add to the skillet. So I just have a basic cast iron skillet here. I'm gonna turn my heat on medium high and I'm gonna wait about two minutes for it to heat up. Sometimes it takes a little longer than that. That's really key in getting that crust if you want a crust on your um, chicken. So I'm gonna wait two minutes and then I'm gonna add my oil. Okay, so now my skillet's hot and I'm just gonna add some olive oil. It's gonna be about two tablespoons. I'm gonna swirl it around just a bit. I'm gonna get nice and hot so when you put that chicken on, you can hear the sizzle. And now I'm gonna add my chicken. And once I add it, I'm not gonna move it. I'm not gonna fiddle with it. I'm gonna keep it there because that's what's gonna kind of seal it in. It's very important to do the exact time, I think. And we'll check it with the temperature just to make sure. And do you see how it's getting a little white coming up the edge? That means it's getting closer to getting done. It's getting halfway done. So we're gonna flip it in about a minute and a half. 
Okay, so now I'm gonna flip it to the other side. And if it pulls off pretty easy, that means it's done on that side. There we go. See that crust right there? Isn't that beautiful? So now I'm just gonna turn it, and it's gonna be for three minutes on the second side. Look at that beautiful crust. It's so pretty. Now my chicken's ready, and I'm gonna take another pan, and just gonna pick it up. Oh, it has that beautiful crust on it. You can see that. This one, so pretty. Actually, this is just a tiny bit of fat. I'm gonna let it sit just a minute there. But the next key is we're gonna let it rest for five minutes, and do not skip this stuff, because this is kind of what locks in your moisture. Um, and I have done this mistake a lot. I would cook my chicken and then right away cut it and serve it, and all your juices inevitably run out. But when you just let it sit for five minutes after it's done, it locks them in and you have the most tender, moist chicken, so it's no fail. Now I just like to double check and make sure you put it in the thickest part of the chicken and it's worth investing in a thermometer, trust me. And you just want it to get to 160. It'll usually climb to 165 once it's resting, so you don't need to really worry about that. Okay, now I have my chicken. And I like to cover it so it stays warm. So I'm just gonna get some saran wrap here and cover it and set a timer for five minutes. Okay, so now this is the last step. It is rested for five minutes. So I'm just gonna uncover it and move it to my cutting board. And as you can see, it's kind of dripping with juice here. This is amazing. Oh, it smells so good too. Goodness. I'm just gonna pour that on top. It is, it's amazing. Okay, so now I'm just gonna take my knife and I'm just gonna slice it this way. Oh, it's beautiful as you can see. And the good thing about this kind of chicken is it's so versatile. You can use it for al chicken alfredo, um, salads, you can use it in just as plated like this with mashed potatoes or sides. But looky here, you see that how juicy and moist and tender that is? Oh, it's just delicious. The flavor's gonna be amazing. So yeah, this is one of my go-to cast iron skillet recipes. It's kind of no fell. And you can change it as far as the spices to however you prefer. But this is amazing, and my kids love it, which is a huge hit. Okay, the next way to cook chicken is gonna be a creamy chicken bake in the oven. Um, and I just wanna give you the general idea, and you can kinda change it to your preferences by adding different things. But first, I'm just gonna have, I have my prep chicken right here, and I'm gonna add um, about a half a cup to a cup of sour cream in my oven bake pan right here. And then you have a couple options. If you have more time, you could make your own roux from scratch. Um, if you're in a pickle like me, you can just grab a can of cream of chicken, cream of mushroom, um, and add it. This is gonna be like your creamy base, okay? So about a, about a cup of each. And then I'm just gonna personalize it. And I'm gonna add probably a green pepper and an onion. You can obviously leave these out if you don't prefer this right here. But I feel like it just gives me a little more flavor. So let me chop this up and we'll add it to our little base here. Okay, I'm gonna add just about a half of an onion. I don't want it to be too overpowering here. But let's see, let's add that to our base. Okay, now that I've customized my base, I have my cream, my sour cream, and I've added a few onions and green peppers. Now I'm just gonna add a little bit of garlic. I'm lazy, I don't wanna peel some garlic right now. So this makes it super simple. Uh, then I'm just gonna add a few spices. Um, obviously some pepper, a little bit of salt, some onion, and then I'm just gonna mix this up together kind of give me a really creamy sauce that's gonna be delicious once it cooks in the oven. Okay, I've already prepped my chicken, uh, but I kind of like to just get a big fork and tenderize it. For some reason, it just makes it more moist and absorbs all of this flavor. So as you can see, they're all cut in tenders. So they're really simple like for children and it's easy for adults too. And usually when it's smaller, it absorbs more flavor. So for baked chicken, I find that that's a really good Tip. I'm going to add this to my pan. Okay, I'm going to mix this up together. I guess I did forget one 
important tip. You do need to preheat your oven to 350. You just wanna make sure all your chicken is coated in its creamy base. And once the oven's preheated, we're gonna cook it for, it's up to you. I typically do between 45 minutes to an hour, depending on the size of the chicken. Since it's cut in tenders, it'll easily be done in 45 minutes, but it kind of just sits there and melts with all the flavors. It's delicious. Um, but if you have larger pieces, I definitely go a little longer. Okay, now I'm gonna pull my chicken bake out of the oven. It smells so delicious already. You can see it's very creamy. I'm gonna give it a little mix. So tender. Goodness, it's fall apart again. Okay, now you can just serve it like this after you let it rest for a little while. But I typically like to add some bacon and some cheese. And I'll put it in there for probably about 10 more minutes. I just top it off with a little bit of parsley, just for looks, you know, because it doesn't have much flavor. <laughs> and then it is ready to serve, you guys. It is gonna be so delicious. Okay, this is chicken on the grill, and I'm just gonna show you with one of my marinades, but it's basically the same process. You have your chicken flattened, these are my chicken breasts, and you're gonna pick a marinade, whether it's barbecue, honey mustard, Italian, herb chicken, um, the options are endless. But I'm gonna do a honey mustard today, and I'm just going to put it in here, put it in the fridge for about four hours, even overnight if you like. But then I'm gonna bring it out, let it rest until it's room temperature, and then we'll grill it. So for the honey mustard, um, I'm just gonna add some mayo, some about, fourth a cup, maybe two and a half a cup, and about the same thing of mustard. Next, you're gonna add um, Dijon mustard. This has some seeds in it still, which is kinda cool, but you can use any variation you want. And I'm gonna do about the same I did with the mayo. About half and half. And then I'm gonna add, I think this is the key. You wanna add some acidic to it, so you can either use lemons, but I actually like pickle juice. Just a little bit of that. And then I'm gonna add some honey. Oh goodness, this is so good. You got the tart, the sweet, the salty, and about, it's probably about three or four tablespoons, somewhere around that. Um, I should probably measure it, but I don't usually because it takes too much work. And just a little bit of pepper. So yummy. Then I'm gonna mix up this and I'm actually gonna set aside some for dip, and then I'm gonna put the rest, I'm gonna put the chicken in here and just marinate it in this actual sauce. That is gonna be so delicious and creamy. So now I'm just adding my chicken to my marinade, and we'll let it rest, and then it'll be ready to grill. Okay, the last way is chicken on the grill, and my marinade is room temperature, which is exactly what I want, so I am ready to stick it on the grill. I have it on a little lake between medium high, so, um, set a timer, put your chicken on, set a timer for four minutes on each side. Um, if it's a little thinner, go for three minutes. Um, but it will be amazing. So, I don't do this as good as Chad, but since he's not here, I'm gonna do it. And I'm gonna baste it in between. So I'm gonna let this cook. Whoa. Okay, let's set a timer for four minutes. Okay, it's been four minutes, so now I'm gonna lift up my grill. And the key is you wanna see if it pulls away from the um, grates. I guess that's what it's called. <laughs> and if it doesn't pull away from the grates, you know it's not ready. So see how it's not quite ready? It's kind of stuck there still. When it releases, it's ready. So we'll give it one more minute. Perfect. Ooh, see how that releases so beautifully? Oh my goodness. This is ready. Whoa, go Erin. Okay, our timer's ready and it should be good to go. Isn't that beautiful? 
Yep, it just releases so perfectly. And you just want to double check your internal temperature to make sure that you're at 165 or 160 and it usually climbs a little higher. So double check that and we are ready to eat this. And you do want to let this rest. Um, that's very important. I hope you've enjoyed cooking with me today. And if you try one of these recipes, guys, come on, comment below which one's your favorite. Um, God bless you all and have a wonderful day.